Guys, what's up? Real quick little intro before we dive into the review. I actually recorded this a couple weeks ago. Um, I was talking to my, a good friend of mine, Tila, uh, one of my patrons, and uh, I told her, because I'm gonna be doing The Exorcist for her, but uh, I told her I was doing House of the Devil, you know, just talking about what I'm doing. And she said, oh my God, I remember telling you, you need to watch this movie. And so I wanted, before I do this, I wanted to dedicate this review to you, Tila, because Tila loves this movie. She says it's so good. Uh, this is the main menu behind me. And uh, here's the, the Blu-ray. So uh, I might watch it again, actually. It, it's a really excellent flick. But we'll get into all that in the review, okay? So Tila, this one's dedicated to you. Anyway, guys, enjoy the review for House of the Devil. How in the hell have I not seen House of the Devil? I guess, I guess it, finally it happened. Finally it happened, all right? Anyway, let's review House of the Devil. Let's go. House of the Devil stars Jocelyn Donahue, Tom Noonan, Mary Warnov, and is directed by Ty West. What's up, guys? I'm really excited because I haven't uh, watched House of the Devil. And it's a movie that you guys have constantly thrown at me in the comments through the years. And uh, I, I don't know why. It all, I always took so long to finally watch this movie. But it is on Shutter. I think I do have the Blu-ray, though, if I dig through my collection somewhere. I think I do. Is this my first Ty West movie? I'm not sure. You know what? I think what it was was this new movie that's coming out called X uh, that looks a lot like it, it, you know, an homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre mixed with a little bit of Boogie Nights. But uh, Ty West directs that. And suddenly I got interested in House of the Devil again because just from the trailer, I was like, this looks like a very interesting movie from a directorial standpoint. And so uh, I went back and I watched this. I, I was, you know, going through Shudder. And sure enough, boom, there it was, House of the Devil. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finally sit down and watch this movie. And boy, am I glad that I did because, wow. This is a bona fide horror movie, okay? This is a horror movie, guys, all right? This isn't your gateway horror movies um, that, you know, I guess like Millennium Slashers, stuff like Scream Queens that's on these days. Uh, no, this is for the horror fans, and, and I love that, you know, and I love that there are so many different uh, departments of horror, you know, for the lighter stuff, uh, and you can go to the opposite end of the spectrum with stuff like, I, I guess, Antichrist that just goes all the way. You know, you can definitely seg segregate your audiences with these different types of films. But anyway, before we go any further, let's give you a quick plot synopsis just in case you haven't seen this movie. And I will talk spoilers probably in the last third of the review. So you're good until then, and I'll give you a warning. But our main character, Samantha, played by Jocelyn Donahue, which I don't think I've ever seen her in anything else, by the way, but she's great in this. She is a babysitter. She's a college student. She's trying to make some extra coinage. So there's this guy, he propositions her to babysit. You know, if you come over, you can babysit, hang out at the house. There's pizza in the fridge. And it happens to be Tom Noonan. And anytime Tom Noonan shows up in a movie, beware, because some freaky shit's about to happen. There's a few things I need to talk about about this movie. First off, is just the aesthetic of it. Like, this is a love letter to, like, late 70s, early 80s horror. And you know how some movies... They're set in that time frame, but you can still tell that they're from today. This movie feels like you're literally watching a movie from 1983. I love how they go so far as to color grade, you know, this movie in a fashion that feels like it, it, it's, it's a movie that was lost in the early 80s and it was just finally released in 2009. That's what this movie feels like. Even down to the titles, you know, like the, the opening and the closing titles. You know how in those older movies, like say from the 60s and 70s, your cast would just show up like a complete list of your cast and it wasn't like scrolling. It was just boom. It was there at the end of the movie. That's the way this movie is. Love that. It's, you know, it really, it's just to, to pull off something like this, it's attention to detail. You know, you got to really pay attention to every little thing in the background and, you know, if you're watching this movie, you're looking for stuff like that. You know, did they screw up somewhere? Is there something from the modern day that might slip in? And no, at least I didn't catch anything. It all looks like it's vintage and it's from the early 80s. Late 70s. Hell, this feels like something that came out of the 70s. Just that 
16 millimeter vibe. Also, this is a slow burn, you know? This is one of those movies, it takes its time and it doesn't adhere to modern tropes. I guess which that ties into my first point and makes this feel more authentic. Uh, there are really no like jump scares. Not to say that jump scares didn't exist back then, but I think jump scares today are a little bit more abrupt and there's no buildup to them like there was back then. But this movie doesn't depend on that stuff at all. It really stretches the scene out uh, you know, it's really just our main character in the house for a good duration of the movie once she gets over there. As the movie goes along, she starts noticing that things are a little off uh, and it really comes into fold in the, the last act of the movie when she opens a, a certain room. And we'll get to that part. How Ty West keeps our attention in the slower parts of this movie is he inserts little scenes, uh, almost like montages that you know, keep you invested and really help get to know who Samantha is as a character. You know, there's one scene where they play this song by The Fix and it's just infectious. And a big reason for that is because Jocelyn Donahue, she really just lets go. You know, this is an actress that trusts her director and you can tell that she had so much fun doing that scene. And this is in a horror movie and they're playing a song by a band that doesn't sound like something out of a horror movie. Which is funny because just yesterday I posted on Killer Flicks, give me a song, because we do questions of the day, give me a song that doesn't feel like it belongs in a horror movie, but for some reason it just works. And my answer to that was Making Love Out of Nothing at All by Air Supply from The Strangers Pray at Night, which is I mean, just genius. That whole last act is pretty much hinged on that song. It's wonderful. So one of the most memorable parts of this movie is in the middle before the shit hits the fan when our main character is just dancing around the house, having fun. This is what every teenager who has, uh, you know, babysat can relate to. You have the house to yourself. There's a little bit of curiosity there because, you know, you want to snoop around a little bit. We've never been in this person's domicile before. And then you got this great music. And she's just, you know, she's free. She's dancing around. But... What's cool about this is this is a horror movie, and so you're waiting for something to jump out of the shadows, something to happen that, you know, keeps you on your toes. Okay, so now, I guess jumping into more of the spoilery stuff, when she actually finally opens that door. Uh, by the time she does that, by the way, we really know who Samantha is as a character. We really are on her side. We're rooting for her. Jocelyn Donahue who does a, a, an amazing job. It really just goes to show how important balance is in a performance. You know, not going too far, but not sounding like you, you know you're tired or you're not into a part. She really just rides that line perfectly. So when she opens the door, there's some crazy devil cult shit going on, and I was you know it's a holy shit moment. You're like, oh wow. I mean, I know this movie's House of the Devil, but how are they going to present that? And boy, do they. <laughs> It really reminded me of like Starry Eyes. And Starry Eyes came out a couple years ago, a few years ago. I'm wondering if, you know, Starry Eyes, they got a little bit of influence from House of the Devil because it is kind of similar. You got the, you know, the devil cult type thing going on. The first movie that came to mind when I saw this scene was Rosemary's Baby. It even feels like it's directed like the scene in Rosemary's Baby where they got Rosemary like tied down. And so this is where the story goes balls to the wall. You know, she breaks free. And I love that Samantha is just doused with blood for the rest of the movie. I think that's just so badass and, and just awesome for a horror movie. I don't know what it is. I just love characters that have blood all over them in horror movies. It, it really it really gets my ghost, Bob. Now, there's some surprises in this movie, too. There's some nice shock value. Again, spoilers ahead. But the last scene of the movie, she's confronted with Mr. Ullman, played by Tom Noonan, right? And the last thing I expected her to do was freaking blow her own head off, but that's what she does. And so she ends up in the hospital, she lives. And then the last scene in the movie, uh, we find out that she's pregnant. Again, Rosemary's baby. So she's pregnant with, I think it's the devil. By this, we know that she was impregnated during that whole ceremony. Cause she, you know, she wakes up. There's an amount of time between she's, when she blacks out and then when she wakes up and she's tied, tied up. So yeah. Beautiful storytelling there by Ty West. In the end, guys, House of the Devil, a bona fide freaking classic. I have to go trapped on an island. This movie is just top notch. And it's definitely one that has high rewatch value. 
Uh, so I can I can definitely see myself watching it more down the line. It's it's just uh, it's a treasure. You know, Ty West, what a great director. And it, this movie really makes me want to watch X even more. Like X might be one of my most anticipated horror movies of the year. So anyway, what are your thoughts on House of the Devil? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do Food for all Fridays. Follow my dum dums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Rumble them out.